Well, hello, and welcome to a new episode. This episode is all about charity or giving to the poor. And, you know, I, I always heard that charity begins at home. So I put most of my effort into my family, making sure that they're okay. But who else should you give to? And if I'm going to be honest, I struggle with this. Like, I look at these charitable organizations and they brag that 60% of all money given actually makes it to the people who need it. So you're telling me you take 40% for your overhead? I don't want to give to you. And can I just give it to people? Can I walk up to people and give them money? Well, the reality is most people wouldn't know what to do with it. They'd waste it or squander it. The old story, you give money to a homeless person and they, you know, they use it to get drink, go buy wine with it or beer. So how do you give? You know, I've, I've grown a little bit, uh, <laughs> you know, jaded to this. I want to give. I want to give freely, but I don't know who to give to. I don't trust these organizations. So I have to pray to God to ask me, who should I give to? Or should I just keep giving to my family? That seems to be the best. What about the local church? Should we give it to the local church? That's another option. If you find a good church, that's a great place to give. So let's keep learning together about charity. Who should we give to? Verses about charity. Psalm 112, 9. He has dispersed. He has given to the poor. His righteousness endures forever. His horn will be exalted with honor. Psalm 41, 1 to 2. Blessed is he who considers the poor. Yahweh will deliver him in the day of evil. Yahweh will preserve him and keep him alive. He shall be blessed on the earth, and he will not surrender him to the will of his enemies. Proverbs 19, 17. He who has pity on the poor lends to Yahweh. He will reward him. Proverbs 14, 21. He who despises his neighbor sins, but he who has pity on the poor is blessed. Proverbs 11, 24 to 25. There is one who scatters and increases yet more. There is one who withholds more than is appropriate, but gains poverty. The liberal soul shall be made fat. He who waters shall be watered also himself. Matthew 25, 34 through 40. Then the king will tell those on his right hand, Come, blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me food to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty? and give you a drink? When did we see you as a stranger and take you in, or naked and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and come to you? The king will answer them, most certainly I tell you, because you did it to one of the least of these my brothers, you did it to me. Mark 10.21 Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said to him, One thing you lack, go sell whatever you have and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. 
and come follow me, taking up the cross. Luke 14, 13 to 14. But when you make a feast, ask the poor, the maimed, the lame, or the blind, and you will be blessed because they don't have the resources to repay you. For you will be repaid in the resurrection of the righteous. Luke 12.33 Sell that which you have and give gifts to the needy. Make for yourselves purses which don't grow old, a treasure in the heavens that doesn't fail, where no thief approaches, neither moth destroys. Luke 638. Give, and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over will be given to you. For with the same measure you measure it, it will be measured back to you. 2 Corinthians 9 7. Let each man give according as he has determined in his heart not grudgingly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. 1 Corinthians 13, 13. But now faith, hope, and love remain. These three, the greatest of these is love. May God add blessing to the reading of his word. And now for our new modern expression. This is the expression sour grapes. And this means someone who is bitter because they could not get what they wanted. So you have sour grapes because you didn't get what you want. This comes from Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 2. What do you mean that you use this proverb concerning the land of Israel, saying, the fathers have eaten sour grapes, and the children's teeth are set on edge. So the idea of sour grapes. We use this a lot when we're jealous of someone. You know, they got something that we wanted. So we have sour grapes.